Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to do a video on, a, well I guess it's a sort of a getting started video because it's the very fundamentals of having a game and that is how to build your army and we're going to look particularly at how to build a brigade. Now obviously in Black Powder it's a divisional level game so your army is made up of multiple brigades, usually two or three and there may be a cavalry brigade as well. And the idea here is not necessarily to uh, to have the brigades that are the superpower gamey min maxed and they're going to absolutely trample your enemies beneath their feet. I mean, you, you can do that as well if you want. But the, but the idea is to have them a bit more historically based, but also how to build a brigade that you're going to get most out of in the game. So even if you're someone who's only interested in using the historical orders of battle, this video hopefully will still be interesting to you because it's going to show how we can get the most out of our figures in a game for the longest. We've spent all this time in lockdown, we've spent a year in it now. I'm sure a lot of us have got fresh armies or new brigades raring and ready to go. So let's see about getting the most out of them and build those brigades that allow us to do so. First of all, I'm going to go through some general principles on building brigades, and then we'll look at a specific example, and for today, I'm going to take a British brigade from Albion Triumphant Volume 1. We'll look at one during the Peninsular War. So what do I mean by having an effective brigade? Well, that's uh, it's quite simple. It's having a brigade that can take part in the battle. It's having brigades that will take the longest amount of time in that they get broken. A brigade is broken when half or more of the units in that brigade have been removed from play. Now, that's a really important difference there. In some of the battle reports, you'll see that we play over half. The, the actual rules are that it's half. We prefer playing over half, but, you know, you pay your money, you take your choice. I'm going to go with rules as written here because that's going to be more applicable to everyone. But if you want to have that battle last a little bit longer then I would recommend that you go for over half units. Broken Brigades effectively can't do anything in the game. They can't advance. They can stand if they are in square, or they can only retreat. If units become disordered and they're part of a Broken Brigade, then they stay disordered, and that's really important because it means that you can't issue them any rally orders and maybe unbreak that brigade. So that's a very important point to note. And again... On the flip side, if you're fighting an enemy and their brigade is broken, you really want to make sure that you at least disorder one of those units in order that they can't quickly rally that unit off and then the brigade comes back into action. So units that are not included in this, though, are artillery. So you can't include any artillery in a brigade to bump up the number of units still active, but then in the same token, if that unit gets destroyed, then it doesn't count towards you know only having half a brigade left so artillery is sort of like an additional extra almost think of it like a brigade upgrade rather than a separate unit this means that if you are building a brigade you want an odd number of units in that brigade that's going to be more powerful so for instance if you've got a brigade of six units then the enemy needs to destroy three and they're going to break that brigade if you've got a brigade of five units then the enemy still has to destroy three to get you below half. In this case, you'll be at 60% their losses. But there's no difference between 60% losses and 50% losses. So you always want to try and have that odd number of units. Now, one thing that it doesn't mention is the size of units, with the exception of tiny units. They are not included in your brigade strength. So again, you can either use them as it's almost like sacrifices, because they don't count towards your brigade, or, you know, if you do have them, you can't add to the number of brigades that you've got. But, there's no difference between having, for argument's sake, two destroyed large units and two small units on the table. That's exactly the same, broken brigade-wise, as having two small units destroyed and two large ones still on the table. So, for that first point, I would recommend against having... A large mix of different unit sizes we're going to come on to a bit later on when we build our sample brigade but that's not necessarily always the case but I would recommend against having 
half of them large, half of them small, you're much better off having four medium sized units. Now if you're doing this from a historical order of battle, that means that when it comes to dividing units by battalions, which is often the case, I would do it, uh, just divide the number of men by the number of battalions. So for instance, if you've got, I'm going to go with an easy number, if you've got 6,666 men in three battalions, then divide that by two and have 2,222 men in each battalion and then convert that to the number of figures. That's going to be much more effective on the tabletop than saying, well, I'll have two full battalions, I'll have those as, say, large units, and then I'll have the third battalion made up of the leftover, the remainder of the figures. So, in this case, for you say, with the 6,600 odd, you might end up having three battalions of uh, 2,500, and then one battalion of just 1,600. Uh, this would be, I don't know, maybe an Austrian brigade. So you'd end up, uh, for some reason, they've got three battalions in this regiment. But you get my point. The point is that you're much better off having units of the same size and capability than you are having a large disparity. It's particularly important when you're using points, but it also becomes important when you're using a historical order of battle. One of the exceptions to the broken brigade rule are brigades made up entirely of units with marauder. If that is the case then they must all be destroyed for that brigade to be broken. For that reason, and we'll come on to this again later, I think it's a really, really strong move to have that brigade of light cavalry in your army. Again, if you go from historical orders of battle, you can, particularly for the French, you can usually get in a unit of chasseurs, or the Prussians were also particularly keen on having some units of cavalry to accompany their infantry as well. So it is possible, it is historically accurate to do that, and it also makes your army much better on the tabletop as well. If you've got them in a brigade with non-marauder cavalry, again, very similar to artillery, they don't count towards A, the number of units in the brigade to start off with, or B, the number of units that have been destroyed from that brigade. So, you know, again, you can sort of add them into your medium or heavy cavalry brigades as well, and they're a bit of a nil-sum gain, or you can have them as their own separate brigades, in which case I think they contribute a lot more to the army. And that's because those brigades of marauder cavalry, they do add to the number of brigades in the army, so for argument's sake you've got three brigades of infantry and a brigade of hussars, you do have four brigades in the army, but they must be completely destroyed to count as broken. We'll get on more into that when we look at the specific example. I think it's probably going to be easier to mention it there. But again, if you are building that army to be more, maybe not even you know all-powerful, but you just want to take part in the game for a little bit longer, then having the Marauders is a really good way of doing that. It's particularly strong for the Russians, because remember, they get their free Cossacks as well. So you can either add those to your heavy and medium cavalry, or you can add them to your light cavalry marauder-based brigade as well. I've been thinking about this quite a lot recently. I've been doing the script for the fourth part of the Prussian army. We've been looking at the Battle of Linny for that one. And it's really brought home to me that the skill of a Napoleonic commander, particularly a higher level one, although in the case of Linny, it's been very much the case with Van Damme, who is, you know, he is a core commander at this point, but, you know, he's not Napoleon. The point is, it's about f when to feed in your reserves to the battle. That seems to be the crucial part of Napoleonic warfare. The key to keeping your brigades in the fight for as long as possible is to foster those reserves and just have maybe one or two units at the front who take the majority of the enemy fire and then the reserves go in and mop up the enemy survivors. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's say, for instance, you've got a brigade of two regiments of three battalions. Let's say it's a French brigade, and you're attacking a Russian line. Well, you can have your units in a number of different formations, but this is what I really like about Black Powder, is it's very versatile. You can have them in whatever formation you want them to be in, but they will be better suited by being in certain formations. So in this case, We'll go with a two battalion wide heavy column. So you're two wide and then you've got three battalions deep, effectively. 
What you're going to do with that one is you're going to advance forward, you're going to take the heavy casualties on the front two battalions. Let's say they end up getting wiped out, but they do manage to cause a couple of casualties to the Russians in the meantime. Well, you've now got those unmolested units behind them, all four of them, ready to go in and mop up the survivors. And that's very similar, you know, that's very much what the French did, especially in the later days, you know, we're talking like 1812 onwards, it was very much that overwhelming sheer force of numbers that would break the enemy. One of the downsides of this, one of the dangers is, though, that the enemy's only got to get lucky with that third battalion if they can break, shake, or disorder them, and suddenly you're in trouble with that whole brigade. That brigade's going to be broken. So it might be worth keeping some units back. We'll talk about that later. Again, I know I keep saying we're going to talk about it later. But it's going to be much easier to explain when we get to the actual army building of itself. One thing that I should have mentioned earlier on as well, and I forgot to mention it with the Marauder things, is I actually had a listener uh, tell me about this, because this is a change from Black Powder Volume 1, I think, that units, uh, sorry, brigades of only two units, both units have to be destroyed for that to be counted as broken. I don't think that was the case in... Uh, the first edition of Black Powder, because it's a suggested rule in Albion Triumphant. So that makes me think that it wasn't. But uh, yeah, so if you've got a smaller brigade, then both units have to be destroyed. That can be very, very useful. We're going to look at that now, because we're going to get into how to build a, a decent brigade with an example of the British in the Peninsula War. So I'm turning to Albion Triumphant Volume 1. I'm looking at page 102, as you can see on the screen. And it's basically the, the short army list for how to make a British brigade. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make it quite a strong, solid one. We're going to get two, maybe three battalions of British infantry. They are the backbone of the army. I should say, we're going to look at around about 600 points, which is a, a medium-sized game, I think. And so that means that we want to have three or five brigades in this army we don't want four it's going to be three or five and so we're looking round about 120 points if we go for five per brigade so that's the limits that we're going to set ourselves obviously not all brigades have to be the same size but just for ease and sake of argument we're going to look for like as i said we're going to look for about 120 points ish and that'll give us five brigades in that 600 points now why was i so adamant there that we don't have four i said it's got to be three it's got to be five remember very early at the start of the video i said that we need an odd number of units and it's the same with brigades as well the army is broken when half or more of the brigades are broken so if we've got five brigades at 120 points each then the enemy needs to break three of those brigades which is the same if I had six brigades of 100 points each. So it should be slightly more difficult for each of those brigades to be broken and thus break the army. Now, British infantry are, for my money, the best infantry in the game. Possibly joint with the Austrians, but that's just their sheer numbers. For quality of infantry, the British are, in my view, the best in the game. And their points reflect that. They are 39 points for a single battalion. So if we're looking at making a brigade of 120 points, then three battalions is the maximum. That takes us to 117 points. Now, I say three battalions is the maximum. That's not strictly true. You can get a fourth one in. If you have four small units, you can downgrade the size of a unit to small for minus eight points. So that makes... I'm doing maths off the fly. This is always great radio uh, so, so that's what 39 31 so 124 so you know you're a few points over but you'll make that back on some of the later brigades but the point there is so you've got four small battalions now or you can take three medium ones now you might say well having the four smaller ones is better because you've got more different units for the enemy to destroy Unfortunately, that's not actually the case. So, because at half units the brigade is considered broken, if there's four small ones, I would have to destroy two brigades to get you down to 50%. If there's three medium ones, then I have to get destroy two of those battalions 
to get you down to 50%. In this case, it'd be 33%, but it would drop you less than 50. If I only destroy one, you're at 66%. So let's look at the number of casualties I have to inflict to get you below that 50% or at that 50%. If you're small, you've got a stamina rating of two. So I would have to do four points of damage to potentially break those things. Now, obviously you can keep rolling double sixes for your morale rolls, but we're looking sort of generally on average. I've got to do four damage to risk you losing those two battalions. If they're medium-sized ones, I've got to do six. So that's that's only two more, but that's a 50% extra damage that I have to do to you. In addition to that, if all the units are firing, then you will get eight dice, two dice for, per battalion from four small ones. You'll get nine dice from three medium-sized ones. Now, one thing that would be slightly better to have the more smaller units would be because the British get first fire, they get an extra dice for that first round of shooting. So for the first volley with four small units, you'd actually be rolling 12 dice, whereas you'd actually, well, actually, no, you'd be rolling 12 for the three medium-sized ones as well. So you'd be the same there. But that's only for that first volley of the game, and you're a lot, lot weaker. And that's why I'm talking about it's really important that you have those odd-numbered number of units in a brigade because it doesn't it, it you're not wasting points on stuff that doesn't increase the survivability of your units that said now this is not the case for the british because their units are too many points the french ones are, are a bit cheaper for those ones it might be worth making a small battalion and just holding them back maybe not even like using them in the battle just keep them right at the back of the battlefield and their job isn't to do anything other than just raise the number of battalions the enemy needs to destroy. So, for argument's sake, if you've got three medium, uh, sorry, four medium battalions in a brigade, buy a fifth small one, keep it at the back. Suddenly, the opponent's got to destroy three of your fighting battalions rather than the two they had to previously. With the British, though, because they're still 31 points for a small unit, I don't think that's particularly worth it. Now, remember, I said that we need an odd number of brigades this is a really strong infantry brigade so we're going to actually have three of those three at 117 points each Blah. spit my false teeth out three at 117 points each is going to be again maths on the fly uh 360 minus nine so 351 points so we're just over halfway to building our army and we've still got two more brigades to get and we're gonna we haven't got any artillery we haven't got any cavalry now i said earlier on that i really really rate light cavalry brigades and that's true however first off i'm going to recommend a heavy cavalry brigade now looking at page 104 this is again i'll be in trying for volume one we can see that we can take two to three dragoon regiments now we've looked at the rules for brigades and it says that if a brigade consists of two or fewer units or one then they all have to be destroyed in order for that brigade to be broken so if we look at say two units in this case then they both have to be destroyed if we get three units then two of them have to be destroyed now this is the only exception to the rule i said earlier on there's always exceptions to every rule and this is when i say always get odd numbered brigades unless it's a brigade of two units because in this case a heavy cavalry uh, regiment for the british is 47 points now that's no small amount that's quite a lot if we were to have that third dragoon regiment or maybe even add a regiment of light dragoons then we'd be potentially having 44 47 if we go for the third heavy dragoons a point regiment that we can't actually use I mean, we can, but we're in risk of not being able to use it if the first two get destroyed. By adding that third unit, we're not increasing the number of units our opponent needs to destroy to stop that brigade being effective. Therefore, I would suggest that we only go for the two units there. So 47 points each, that's going to be 94 points. So, you know, we're building up, but that's quite a cheap brigade, actually when we compare it to the 117 points 
of each infantry one. The fifth and final brigade I'm going to recommend here is going to be one of British Light Cavalry. You can go for the Light Dragoons on this one, or maybe even Hussars. And they top out at 44 points each. Now this one you can be slightly more flexible with because they've all got Marauder. So for this one I would recommend that you go for all three. Because having that third unit does increase the number of units your opponent has to destroy in order to break that brigade. Now they're 44 points each. So if we get three units of those... We're looking at 132 points, which is slightly over our 120 point required limit. But that's fine. We can just take those points back from the Heavy Cavalry Brigade, where we only spent 96 points. So we're very close to our total now. We're at 577 points. We've got 23 points remaining. We can't do anything with that. But there is one key bar stool leg missing from the Napoleonic Trifecta. We don't have any artillery at the moment. Artillery is 31 points. So what I'm going to suggest is we reduce the size of one of our units to a small unit. That'll save us 8 points, which gives us exactly the number of points we need to add in a battery of Royal Artillery to one of our infantry brigades. Or possibly even... In fact, yeah, or we can get some horse artillery. We'll have a point left over. I'd go for foot artillery, add it to one of the infantry brigades. Now you could shave off some more points if you swapped out the 3rd Infantry Brigade for maybe a brigade of Portuguese or possibly some allied Spanish. That could help as well. But what we've built here are 5 brigades, each of an odd number of units, apart from the Heavy Cavalry one. And that means that the enemy is going to have to... It's, it's the most efficient we can be because the enemy is going to have to destroy the maximum number of units compared to the number of units that we actually have. So, for instance, we've got nine infantry battalions, and the enemy is going to have to destroy six of them in order to break our army. Now, if we had an extra battalion each of those uh, brigades, so we'd have 12 battalions, the enemy would still only have to destroy six to break all three of those brigades. Obviously, it'd have to be two from each. You couldn't just do you know, four from one and two from another. But the point there is... That we're maximising the number of units the enemy has to destroy whilst minimising the outlay that we spend on them. Which will let you add in a rifle company to one of those brigades. Remember, because they're tiny, they won't add to the number of units that need to be destroyed. But they're still that extra little unit that you can use to plink away at the enemy columns. Trust me, riflemen are actually pretty strong. Now, one thing that I haven't really talked about in this video, and it is worth bearing in mind, is that, yes, it's all well and good having the, the maximum number of units the enemy has to destroy, but that doesn't necessarily help us doing the fighting. It's easier for something like the Brits, or the Russians, or to an extent the Austrians as well, uh, because they're more defensive armies. If you want an aggressive army, something like the French or perhaps the Prussians, then you might need that redundancy built in. We're going to go on to a look at those in the How Do They Play videos, which is a series I've not done one of in a while, and it's probably one that I need to start spooling up again, because I think it's it's a useful set of, series, of uh, videos for people just starting out. But I just wanted in this video to go through some overall um, impressions on how to build good brigades, and then just show you in an example at the end. So the main takeaways are going to be always try and have an odd number of brigades in your army. This is if you're playing that half have to be destroyed in order to break the army. If it's over half, then you want to do the exact opposite of everything I said in this video, apart from the two units thing. So actually, yeah, even even including that. But anyway, anyway, for the if half the units are destroyed, the brigade, the army is broken. If half the brigades are, so you want an odd number of brigades, and within those brigades, you want an odd number of units. Remember, artillery and tiny units don't count, so you can scatter those through to your heart's content. But that's the the key point I wanted to drive across: is try and get those odd number of units all across the board as you build up your army in odd numbered blocks. That'll help your army be far more efficient. Thank you very much for watching. I, As I mentioned, I'm just working on the part four of the Prussian video at the moment. Hopefully that'll be next weekend's 
uh, release, but don't hold me to it. Uh, hopefully it'll be done. I was hoping it'd be done in time for this weekend, but it just needed a bit more polishing. Thank you very much for bearing with me on that series. Just let you know now, the channel does have membership, so you can, next to the join button, there's a little, uh, sorry, next to the subscribe button is a join button, so you can join the channel. I'm still working on the perks and things for for those, but if you would like to help support the channel, then you can join the channel down there. I'm also, you can also find me on Facebook and Twitter. Yes, I'm still on Twitter. But sharing and commenting and liking the video is helps more than I can say. At the moment, YouTube seems to be changing their algorithms again. So I don't know if that's going to help or hinder the channel. Uh, I, I'm a natural Yorkshireman, so I'm going to suggest it's probably not going to help the channel. But we'll see. But I just want to thank you all so much for sharing, subscribing, liking the videos. It really, really does help us reach new people. So thank you very much for that. And I'll see you next time. If you wanted to get the absolute maximum, you know, squeeze every single point, then I might recommend that you also make the the third British battalion in each brigade. So there's three of them. You make those small. You can get an extra eight points out of each one doing that.